Hey guys, it's Teddy and you're watching The Crypto Future. Recently, I was featured on My Crypto Journey or Rodney's uh, live stream immediately after Max Equation's live stream. He's one of the developers, that, the lead developers of Satamask. I watched the live stream and I had a reaction from the things that were said and uh, the video blew up. You know, I have a bunch of haters and I have a bunch of people that love me. I appreciate every single one of you. I am a Satama holder. I want Say Damask to succeed. I'm here for the long term. I'm not going to sell my bag. I'm not moaning. I'm literally giving you the facts from a technology standpoint. Um, the reason I feel that I know about this is I've actually participated and went to AWS reInvent multiple times. I work in this IT field. Um, here is proof right here. I have gone to AWS reInvent. I was an attendee. They give you these badges when you attend. I've gone for the last six years. And it's a great learning experience. And the reason I go is you learn a lot. You learn about all the resources Amazon gives you in order to succeed and have successful applications. Now, when I talk Sadamask, I'm not trying to knock on Sadamask. I'm not saying they're doing a bad job. All I'm trying to say is they're not trying, they're not being completely transparent with this. There are certain things I know about this industry that make me question certain things they're saying. That doesn't necessarily mean, hey, that's it, I want them to fail. You know, what it really means is, hey, they're going they're gonna find this out. This is the next step. This is what they need to do to succeed. And you can't completely uh, rely just on one thing. You know, you can't completely say, hey, we have uh, multi-day bot attacks. I mean, there are tools AWS gives you in order to prevent this. So there's no way you suffered a multi-gate, multi-day bot attack if you've turned on the resources that AWS gives you. And maybe they're learning and they're adapting as they go. The project will succeed. And now let's talk credibility. So I do attend AWS reInvent, which is a, a convention Amazon Web Services holds, which is the back end for the SATA mask application. Um, when I attend, one of the things I do is I participate in hackathons. What a hackathon is, is Amazon Web Services puts all the people that attend um, that are interested in solving a problem uh, for a good cause, basically, into a room. You make a team. And usually teams are already pre-made and they find a table and they try to solve a challenge. So just like that, my teams have never been pre-made. I walk in there like with no prior knowledge. Um, and then I find random developers and we try to solve a project. So I've won these competitions twice. I've, um, I've won the hackathons for Urban Institute and I've won the hackathon for ThoughtWorks, which are sustainability and code green hackathons. So. I am going to try and show you proof. It's up to you whether you believe me or not. I'm not looking for your credibility or your acceptance. I'm just trying to stop the FUD that I'm not just a random guy that just loves Amazon and I'm trying to demolish Sadamask. I need Sadamask to succeed in order to prosper with my own investment. All I'm trying to say is don't believe everything. You know, you I know this from experience that there are certain things that they may be lying about. Um, and that's basically it. So. I will now go to the AWS nonprofits Twitter. So this is the uh, Twitter account that was ran by AWS when I did this hackathon. Uh, it was at this reInvent, which I told you about in 2019, uh, December 14th. I attended it and you can see me right here. This is me on the stage at this hackathon. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in here. It'll be easier for you guys. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There you go. So this is me right at the end. This is my team right there. Uh, and we solved the issue where they needed to figure out uh, the, the quality of life and how it relates to building height. And one of the things we did is we made an algorithm, a machine learning algorithm to speculate, hey, can quality of life be measured by um, the stories like the building height, right? So if you live in a city, is your quality of life better than if you lived in a rural? Area. So we used a thing called Mapbox, we did many algorithms, and we gave our analysis and they were like, hey, you guys did great, you solved the issue, you're a winner, I placed third at that hackathon. Um, and this is the proof right from their account. I even went into my own personal uh, Instagram, and you can see right here that this is December 2nd, exactly when I attended the hackathon, the 7th annual nonprofit hackathon, and I won. Um, and I believe one of these is a video, so you'll actually see the call out here. Oh. Okay, 
That's me. That's me. That is live. That is everything that I'm telling you about. I attended this hackathon. This is how we were announced. This is my table. And literally, my application ju got judged and we were placed. No, not once. I've done this twice, right? So it was an awesome hackathon. I loved it. MGM Conference Center, Las Vegas. And I went again uh, this past year, 21. Well, wait, let me just make sure I'm at the end here. Oops. Yeah, and this is one of the guys that organized it. Um, and here's me attending in 2021. And they didn't give me a, a certificate this time, but they gave me a shirt and they gave me AWS credits and they're going to send me a mug in the mail or something. But you can see I attended this. You can see the badge I'm wearing. Uh, this is one of the replays. I saw Zed there. And there you go, AWS Hackathon winner. So yet again, one second this time. So I've literally placed... I know AWS, I know enough that I can win the hackathon, you know, that's got to tell you something, right? So that's really what I want to talk about with my credentials in AWS. All right, so here's one of the comments that I actually found that was entertaining. And there's many comments that are repeated like this, like, hey, I don't know what I'm talking about. Amazon doesn't do this or Amazon doesn't do that. I like to think I stay up to date with what I know about AWS because I work in AWS. I need to keep up with this stuff, especially when architecting high level availability applications. So Brenji says, this guy sounds like he knows app development, but doesn't really understand DDoS attacks and networking. AWS will allocate a certain amount of bandwidth to each of its customers and their services. The allocation of bandwidth can completely be overloaded by a DDoS attack without taking down other customers on AWS. AWS is going to allow an overload of one customer's application to take down other other AWS customers in the same data center or take down the physical infrastructure that say to mask EC2 instances run on. So I think this is a big misconception right there. I do not believe say to mask is using EC2 instances. I believe they are using serverless. They're on API gateway. There's no need for an EC2. If they are using it, that's fine. You can always uh, deploy service layer on EC2, con con connect it with an API gateway or Lambda layer really. Um, and do APIs that way, regardless. Also, for those claiming Amazon Shield would prevent DDoS attacks, AWS Shield only protects against layer three and four attacks, not layer seven. So you can have a layer seven DDoS attack that does not overload your network. Like right there, I will come back to this, but this is so false. Like AWS protects against all layer attacks. There is no claim. You can Google this yourself. Show me the proof here. Um, so anyway. The no network connection error could be built in error in the app installed on our phones that pops up when the app could not communicate with the registration servers running on AWS. None of us have all the data to tell what is really going on. Only the Saitama devs that have that data. At this point, all the external analysis people are doing, including myself, is speculation. You can't do root cause analysis without all the data. And this is exactly right. You cannot do root cause analysis without the data. But when you have the team telling you, hey, we're suffering a layer seven multi-day DDoS attack and they've enabled AWS WAF and AWS Shield, then you know that there probably is no way that they're suffering a multi-day DDoS attack. Um, and even this, like there's even people, let me see if I can find another comment. Uh, Teddy needs to shut up giving misinformation. He's a developer, not a network engineer. Saitama dev team said they were getting 3 million requests per second. Having a firewall and WAF doesn't mean you are protected from a massive DDoS attack. You can also DOS yourself. Any system being overwhelmed is semi-denial of service. DDoS protection is expensive and complex. Hint, I work with DDoS prevention for a living. No one said it wasn't expensive. I mean, just to enable AWS WAF for $3,000 a month, you know, and I feel like say, say the mask, I mean, the, with the reach that it has, it should be paying $3,000 a month, if not more in infrastructure, just to keep this app secure for all of us. Are you going to trust an app that's super easy and not that much cost to maintain? Or are you going to trust the app that's spent all this money on security, spent all this money on DDoS protection, spent all this money on bot protection, right? So, okay, fine. I need to shut up. I'm giving misinformation, but let's look at this, right? So one guy says, hey, layer seven is not able to be mitigated 
by AWS. Another guy tells me, I don't know anything about network engineering. And that's fine. I don't know everything about network engineering. I'm an architect. What I do is I build the entire architecture. I'm not trying to be an expert in every single layer. I just know that each component, what components need to be used in order to build an application that's highly available, right? So let's just look at a simple WAF uh, guide, right? This is AWS Shield with WAF. And in one of their guides, right from their documentation with the developer guide, and in order to get where I am, I did start as a developer, guys. This is accurate information. And now I'm a director level position where I literally tell others on how to build these applications. So step three, configure application layer, layer seven DDoS protection. This is right from Amazon AWS.com that are telling you that you can make a web ACL and literally add rate limits and stop uh, concurrent layer seven, layer seven DDoS attacks. And not only layer seven, they hit all the layers in AWS WAF and AWS Shield when used both in conjunction, right? So other fun things, I don't know what I'm talking about. AWS can suffer and have uh, network level outages, which is true. Their data center can have DDoS uh, attacks and they can be taken down. Well, this is the thing. AWS has what they call an SLA, service level agreement. So when you're using WAF, when you're using any of these uh, AWS services and you have an SLA with them, usually it tells you, hey, we guarantee um, a monthly uptime. If you get anything less than 99.995% monthly uptime, they will credit you 10% of the bill. If you get less than 99%, like guys, this is how confident AWS is. This is right from their website, right from the SLA of WAF, that they are guaranteeing this, this level of protection, 99.0% of protection or equal to 95%. So even between 99 and 95%, and they will give you back 25% of the service charge if it, if it doesn't meet this SLA. If it's less than 95%, that means you weren't, you, 95% of availability, 95% of the time, everything works. And if it doesn't, and it's less than that, they're giving you back your entire bill. They ain't even going to take a charge from you. That's how confident AWS is that their apps are not going to go down. Their services are not going to go down. And I've literally shown you that they do protect, protect against layer seven attacks, DDoS attacks. So when this team is coming out and telling me that, hey, it's a multi-day attack, it's a layer seven bot attack. It's great to enable recapture. Recapture is what you're supposed to do when you suffer bot attacks. But I do not believe it was multi-day. I think they were just buying time, trying to figure it out. And there's no negativity in that. That's what you're supposed to do as a team. You're trying to make this app usable for all users. This is what you have to do in order to understand where the issue is. And once they get past this issue, they're going to use this as a learning experience for their next uh, application. This is not the last application Max and their team is going to make. This is nothing but a small stepping stone for the great uh, future that Sata Mask will have. Um, eventually, they'll get through this. They'll build many other apps, and it's just a small like issue, you know. So my issue is not, hey, I'm docking or knocking on the um, Sata Mask team. They're they're horrible. I'm better than them. That's not even the issue. All I'm trying to say is, hey, these tools exist in AWS. You claim you've turned them on, but you're coming out with this narrative that it's a multi-day DDoS attack. So I hope I've literally proven to you guys why this can't be a DDoS attack that's going multi-day. I mean, I've shown you the AWS services, I've shown you the service level agreements, and I really hope it gives you um, at least more credibility in your decision on whether you believe me or not on how much my knowledge in AWS goes down. I'm very happy to debate this with anybody. I don't understand the entire universe. Until I'm presented with new information coming from the Saitama team, this is going to be my narrative. I comp I trust AWS here more than Satamask. I'm sorry. They've been here longer. They're the service provider. And eventually Satamask will succeed and I will be there and it'll be great. You know, I'm not looking into this to fud the thing. I'm not getting any money from this. I literally am an investor and I'm just wondering what's going on with Satamask. Um, and that's basically it. So I hope this gives you guys some credibility in making uh, a decision on whether you believe me or not. And if you don't, I really don't care. I just wanted to give you guys, um, especially the people that do agree with me, the technology experts that agree with me as well, that, hey, I kind of know what I'm talking about. 
there are these proofs on the internet that you can check yourself, you know? So yeah, guys, that's basically it. Um, I hope you enjoy this type of uh, content, but really my content is I look at my portfolio coins. I look at investments I want to uh, get into. I do like real time analysis. I ain't trying to edit analysis out and make the coin look great. I show you how I approach a coin, how I choose my investment. And if that's the type of content you like, I please ask that you continue to subscribe. And um, if you're a new watcher, please subscribe. You know, I'm really trying to grow my channel and inform you on how I make these decisions because I think we can do it. We can grow together. We can become millionaires. We can get Lambos, guys. I have this mini Lambo that I've been, you know, one day, one day it will happen. It will be great. And I can't wait. So guys, thanks for watching. And till next time.